Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are also ready to finish up on how to create these chat bubble uh, messages inside of our Facebook Messenger chat application. And today we are going to look at two things. So let's go ahead and hop into the iOS simulator here and take a look at our finished product. And so notice we have our receiving messages inside of these gray bubbles and there's a text view inside of them. And also we have a blue bubble with white text. And these are what I'll be calling the outgoing sending messages from your chat app. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing here I want to address is a question that uh, Jesus Adolfo sent in the other day. And he says, could you add a bub bubble style like that small tail triangle that most chat applications have? Uh, sorry for asking more things, LOL, but probably it is a piece of cake for you. So Jesus, thank you for that question. And yes, we are going to learn how to build these little small tails at the end of this chat bubble and the beginning of this gray chat bubble here. And so we're going to do that um, at the end of this tutorial here. So I'm going to shrink that down, drag that over there. And so I'm going to go back to this chat application. Uh, FB Messenger that we've been kind of writing up so far. And if you want to get all caught up, make sure to click the link down below in the description for some of the previous videos. And having said that, I'm going to run this application, this one run, and see what we have so far. Click into Steve Jobs, we get three messages in gray, and they don't have a tail, which is exactly where we are at. And so here's the thing. I want to introduce a property on my message object. And basically each one of these rows contain a message object. And that property I want to add is a Boolean property called is sender. So let's go into this uh, Facebook uh, core data file and I'll go to that message entity and hit that add. I'm gonna call this is sender like that. And for the type, it's going to be a Boolean. And basically, I'm going to use this Boolean attribute here to differentiate between a, uh, an incoming receiving message and then a blue outgoing sending message. So that's what that property is going to be used for. And I'm going to show you what happens, unfortunately, after you run the application when you make this small change. So take a look. It crashes, and it says the model used to open the store is incompatible with the one used to create the store. Essentially, when you make a change to core data like that, you have to uh, re redo some things here. So basically, I'm going to stop the app, remove it like so, and then rerunning the application regenerates some of the core data uh, structure files, and then your application is fine again. Um, and that's how you solve that error. The next thing you want to do is you want to regenerate these core data files right here. And notice how we don't have that is sender attribute here. And essentially, regenerating will fix that problem for us. So let's go to iOS core data, click on that, check that box, hit message, okay, next, and then hit create. And now your file will contain this is sender uh, NS number property that we'll use for the uh, blue text bubble. And now I want to go to friends controller helper and I want to create a fourth message inside of this collection view right under here, right? So to make it easier for you guys to kind of follow this video, I want to take all of this code and kind of just cut and paste inside this little section here. And I'm gonna call this a private function, create Steve messages. And all that code that I have that creates all these messages are now inside of this little private method, uh, method block here. And this will actually be, be create Steve messages with context. And context is an NS managed object context. And basically, I'm going to call that in this method here. Use context. Context is something that we get off of app delegate from uh, this core data template project that we've created in the very beginning. Oof. 
And let's see. So I'm going to command click on there. And like I was saying before, I'm going to create this fourth message. And this is my uh, response message here. And I'm going to copy and paste all of that and paste that in there. And this is my response to his question of, are you interested in buying an Apple device? I'm going to say, yes, totally looking to buy an iPhone 7. I know you guys are too. Uh, if you guys wait till September, hopefully you guys will be able to get your hands on one. I know I'll be waiting. Let's run. So I'm going to click into Steve Jobs, and then we get this fourth method message here, which I'll be using as my uh, outgoing blue uh, sending message for this Steve Jobs chat dialogue. And now I'm going to go into chat log controller. And this is the file that contains all of the modifications for each one of these rows here. And if we look at cell for item at index path, we see these two lines here. And these basically, uh, these frame lines actually modify where these gray bubbles land and where the text view also lands within this cell here. Now I want to make this uh, gray bubble move to the right here and also make this gray blue. So basically I want to detect when a sending message, basically a sending message is uh, a, a Boolean value of true for its sender or a false value. Okay. Now let's go back to, let's see, friends controller helper. So, like I was saying earlier, I want to uh, set this is sender property on message here. So if we command click into create message with text, we get to this method. And I want to actually say message that is sender. Remember this is an NS number property. And we want to use this bool. So what do we put in this bool value here? Basically, we will use something that is um, kind of this new uh, nifty trick that you can do in Swift and it's called an optional parameter and I'll just type it out here. So is sender bool and notice if I just leave it like this, all these methods are complaining that this is sender par uh, parameter is not uh, being sent in. So if we just say equals false, we will default this parameter to false and then now we will say is sender like that. And so now every time we want to just set the is sender to true, we just do is sender true. And now we have an optional uh, parameter inside of this method that we just set is sender to a true value like that. So hopefully that is not too tricky. And it's a really cool uh, thing that Swift allows us to do. And objective C is kind of old and doesn't allow us to do nifty, nifty things like that. So let's go back to chat log controller and go back to this uh, self write up index path method. And we can actually look for this uh, is sender property like this. So let's uh, get a handle on the message object for the row like that. Uh, messages index path, the item. And I can already tell that we should clean up some of this code here. So because we are good programmers and we have good discipline, we will remove these uh, unnecessary unwraps like that. And then we will do that. So message, message, and what do we got there? Okay, so it's complaining about the well, image name, right? So message dot friend is what we want and then now we have a handle on message right here so i'm going to say this uh, without talking too much about the logic i'm just going to type it out and hopefully it will make sense so whenever we do an if check like this we have to unwrap these properties and then i'm going to put a bang there cut that in there and then i'm just going to type it else here so basically, I run the application and all the first three messages inside of this chat log here, 
Come click on there. Basically, the uh, is sender boolean is always false, so it enters inside of these two lines here. And when we are sending the message, it's entering this line here. And that's why you don't see the message because these frames are not being set on the UI components. And now what I can do is if I copy and paste this and modify a couple of these frame properties, we'll get the blue bubble or the gray bubble right now on the right edge of the screen. And what I mean is I want to go into the cell.txt bubble view frame here and I want to do something with the X value of this blue or this gray bubble. And basically I want to do estimated frame dot width minus, um, well actually let's do this, uh, view dot frame dot width minus estimated frame. So we're going to take the entire views uh, width and then we'll subtract it by this amount. And basically it will take us here and then subtract it here. And basically we'll get somewhere around here as a starting point and then the bubble will extend itself out like that. Okay, I promise you that is what we're going to get. So I'm gonna run the application and click into Steve Jobs here. And then we get the bubble that goes from right there and ends somewhat over here-ish on the um, outside of the bounds of the simulator. And that's because we need to take into account these two values for the, the width of the frame. And what I mean is I want to subtract 16, subtract eight. And if we do that, we get the bubble um, touching the bounds of the app. So we see the bubble kind of ends. Let's see, let me just bump this up, bring it down here. The bubble kind of ends right there. So perfectly at the edge of the screen. And I want to fix the text view frame as well. So basically I'm gonna take this uh, 48 value, I'm gonna take it away and just copy this inside of that value. So let's take that and get rid of the eight as well. And then I have to subtract 16 from that value. So if we subtract 16, we will get uh, something for the text view. And we get this, which lands right inside of the bubble, which is pretty good. And basically, uh, instead of hugging the edge on the right side, I want to push it over uh, roughly eight pixels. So for each one of these frames, I will subtract eight from there. And then let's put a space right there. For I'll subtract eight as well. So pretty good. So I'm gonna run, and now we get eight on this side, and then everything is sitting pretty well. Um, actually, I probably want to add another eight pixels on the right. So let's just make this 16 right there, and make this a 16 value. And also, I want to do uh, this, this hiding of this uh, icon right there. And I'm going to do that in each one of these blocks. So cell dot uh, profile imagery dot hidden is uh, let's see false for uh, whenever the message is a receiving message and cell dot profile image view dot hidden is true when it is a sending message here so i'm just going to comment this and let's see uh, outgoing sending message for that i'm going to click and there we go the last remaining thing is to change this um, gray, bu uh, gray bubble into a blue bubble. So cell dot text bubble view dot background color is UI color. And the RGB values will be 0, 137 over 255, 249 over 255, 1. And we also have to set the gray bubble value up here. So background color equals UI color. Uh, white, uh, 0 0.95, and one for the gray color. Let's see, and we get the simulator, click into the app here, and then we get this blue value. Let's shrink this guy one more time, bring it to the corner, 
And the final value that we have to set is this uh, text as a message, text view. And we set the text color to a white color like this, white color. And we'll copy and paste that, paste that down there. And this will be black color for outgoing messages. So it's important that you set these values here for both, uh, both outgoing and incoming messages. And that's because when these cells get recycled, you actually have to reset all of these properties. So basically this cell right here could be used up here as well. And you just have to keep track of all of your properties uh, appropriately. So that's pretty good. Um, and that takes care of the first part of this video. Hope you guys are still with me. Uh, the second part is to get these little message tails inside of these bubbles. And this is actually somewhat trickier. And let's see, what is the easiest way to illustrate how to do this? So the first thing we need to do is we actually have to use images for these tails here. Um, and the idea is for these, these actual text bubble views, we actually use a background image for the view entirely and just ignore the background color. And let's see. The idea is to import an image first. And so I'm gonna go into Finder and I'm going to import these two bubbles. So basically I'm gonna pull down there and we have a a blue bubble here that has a right tail and then a gray bubble with a left tail. And they're both black, so we're gonna modify the, uh, the color, the tint color in code. Okay, and now that we have our it, uh, assets imported, let's go back to our chat log controller. And so the idea here is I want to add that image inside of our text bubble view, which is this, this blue bubble. And so let me go back to our application here. So I'm going to add that image inside of this blue bubble here. Actually, let's do the gray bubble first. Okay. Whew. So this is going to be a little tricky. And I'm going to say this here. Let, uh, let's see, bubble, image view, image view, like that. This will just be an image view that we create in code. Image see image view dot image equals UI image and image let's see named let's see why is it not coming up so UI image name like that okay bubble so we'll say gray and okay return image view and then we just print print get that all closed off and build we should be fine okay so I, the idea here is I want to add a subview onto text bubble view. So text bubble view, add subview, uh, two, 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 bubble, image view, like that. And I'm going to add constraints onto this bubble view. So uh, I'm going to expand that from left edge to right edge, like that. And this will be uh, bubble, image view. Let's copy and paste that. I'm going to do the same thing with the top to bottom constraints. And now I'm going to run this piece of code and show you what we have, which might be a little ugly for now. And you see how it just appears kind of ugly like that. So the trick here is we want to use um, image with, let's see, resizable image with cap insets like that. And the idea is we provide it with uh, UI edge uh, insets make, and we get this. So we actually need to unwrap this right that. And if we specify properties of 22, I believe it's 20, maybe it's 26, 22, 26, I believe are some of the values. Let me see. Okay. So I'm gonna run that and then explain to you what these values do really, really quickly. I'm gonna click that. You see how this uh, bubble now has a black bubble, but it's no longer being stretched 
because we've provided it with a resizable image that has these inset values. So where does 22 and 26 come from? And I'm going to show you by going to Photoshop. And here is the actual uh, image right there. And notice how if I go into 22, 26, and that will be 24 and 52. So if I go to actually 20, 44 and 52 is roughly here. So it's sitting at this point here. And basically, we're using this point as the starting point of the, uh, the tiling of the innards of the, um, the actual background image. So basically, it's saying use this as the left edge and then use this as the uh, bottom left. And this is the top right and this is the bottom right. Essentially, that's the idea of what this code is doing. And then it just stretches that image so that all the corners are being used properly. And then it expands the middle like so. Okay. And the next thing we need to do is we need to use this image to uh, image with rendering mode like that. And then this needs to be always template. And if we set this, if we use this uh, image with rendering mode, we can actually set the image views tint color to UI color dot, uh, let's see, maybe white, 0 0.95 and one, and run that. And that, this right here allows me to just simply modify the tint color of that bubble. And then it appears kind of like gray like that. So that's gray right here. It's also gray there, but you can't really see it. So I'm going to turn off the text bubbles background color. It's actually right here. So the better thing to do is to use a value of nine zero and that will change the, the actual bubble part. Let me just put that in the middle and notice how the, uh, the image background is actually this darker gray here. It has a tail on the left. And then this one has a tail on the right. So I'm going to fix this so that it wraps the text uh, a little bit better. So let's go into this section here and I'm going to push this. So I'm going to do this here. <sighs> Minus let's see 16, uh, perhaps 12. So I'm subtract 12 from the actual text bubble view. I was going to push it um, 12 pixels to the left, kind of as we would expect. So 12 pixels to the left, and I'm going to expand it by maybe 12 pixels to the right. So actually, that looks like it's a little too much. So let's make it 10 pixels. And then for the width, I'm going to add 10 like that. And the bubble is basically going to have just enough space to wrap the text. So that gives it a little bit of room and I'm going to make it even wider by adding more pixels to the bubble. So I just added six more pixels to the width and click in there again. And then now we have a little bit more breathing room along the right side. And also, I feel like I want to push the top edge to uh, up a little bit and the bottom edge further down. So I'm going to go to uh, this value here. Let's put by negative four and plus four for the height. And I want to see what that gives us inside of our uh, row. So that gives me a little bit more space on the top and bottom. That looks pretty good. And I actually want to add perhaps six down there uh, and run and then see what we get. So I'm clicking that. And then now we get this nice wrapping of the text view inside of our uh, receiving text bubbles. So there we go. That was kind of tricky, but you see how the math actually, you just have to kind of guess at what the math values should be. And they are kind of dependent on what your actual uh, Photoshop image 
uh, sizing is. So this is just a arbitrary size, and these values work for this arbitrary size right here. Okay, so let's disable the background color right here, and then I'm gonna disable it right there. And essentially, what that gives us is just the bubble. Well, actually, let me just disable it here as well. Let's go back to this right there. And then we can now run the application and see what we get. So we get just the text bubble and has a nice tail on the back. And then now we can change the tint color based on this is center boolean value. And I'm going to do this here. Cell dot uh, bubble image view dot tint color is this actual color here. And then I'm going to copy and paste that. And when it's an outgoing message, I'm going to change that tint color to this actual blue color right here. So I'm going to run that. And we'll see what we get. So we get this gray value, but let's see. So we also get this blue bubble here, but we actually need to use a different image for this blue bubble. And I'm going to do that by, let's see, going to this asset. We're going to use this blue bubble here. So let's go back to chat log controller. And hopefully I can do this properly. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. So let's do that quickly here. And basically, I want to copy and paste this. And every time we are, let's see here. Okay. I want to do something like this where if I'm inside of here, I'll set this to bubble blue like that. But instead of doing this, I'm going to show you how to actually correctly do this so that you don't mess things up, okay? And what I mean is I'm going to create these static fields on this chat log message cell up here. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the static let uh, gray bubble image equals that, okay? And then we can do this here. So uh, chat, we can use chat log message cell dot gray bubble image, and we'll just get that there. And the idea is I want to do the exact same thing here, but instead of using gray bubble, I'll say blue bubble image, and this will be, be the blue uh, bubble blue like that. And then inside of our cells, I want to just change to these images based on these, uh, this is, this is a uh, sender property. So we're gonna do this here. We're gonna do cell dot uh, bubble image view dot image is chat log message cell gray bubble image. And then we'll do the same thing here. We use blue bubble image. We're just going to run that. And basically, we're going to have a left tail for a gray receiving message, and then a right tail for the uh, blue outgoing message. So I'm going to fix this up. Um, basically, I'm going to increase, uh, bring some spacing to the left and to the right. And we're going to do that by going into, let's see, text bubble, frame. And I'm going to subtract, let's see, perhaps 10. And for the width, I'm going to add 10. And for this value, let's also do the negative 4 and add, let's see, add 6 right there. It'll give us just the right amount of spacing, hopefully. All right, let's click there. And then the final thing we need to do is push this text view over just a little bit. Let's go to the message text view, and then I'm going to subtract about eight pixels from the text frame, and that'll give us a nice shift in the left direction. And there we go. So I'm gonna add a couple of, message, um, a couple of messages onto the chat log by just going to friends controller helper here, 
and go back to this block of code. And I'm going to copy this uh, message here. And then he's going to respond to my message by saying, let's see, uh, okay, totally understand that you want the new iPhone 7, but you'll have to wait until uh, September uh, for the new release. Sorry, but that's just how Apple likes to do things. And so let's run that. Remember, this is a, let's see, this is a incoming message from Steve. So it'll appear as gray. And let's just add one more right there. So I'm going to copy this outgoing message. And he's going to say, absolutely. Uh, I'll just use my gigantic iPhone 6 Plus until then. So I'm going to run that. Now that will give us a blue bubble. And let's see what that looks like. So it looks like that, and let's just bring it back to the middle again. And we will just drag this up. And this looks pretty good. I think the Facebook Messenger has a little checkbox, a blue checkbox on the bottom right that shows whether or not you've, I guess, looked at the message or something like that. And I'm trying to just look at if we have anything missing here. So that looks pretty, pretty good, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Looks good, looks good, looks good. And if we go inside of this here, so we get these, uh, this unwrapped uh, optional value of nil, so it crashes here. So I'm going to leave that for you guys to fix. Um, basically, you should check whether or not this is sender is, is a valid Boolean before you unwrap it. Cool. And let's see, so there's this date here, uh, probably not going to go into that. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all uh, this video is going to talk about. A lot of interesting concepts like setting our resizable backgrounds and also some interesting math calculations, messing with core data, having to relaunch core data when you modify attribute properties. So a lot of interesting stuff. Hopefully you liked the content in today's lesson. Make sure to hit the like button if you do. And yeah, remember this channel is all about learning how to build applications by taking one from the app store and then breaking it down, reconstructing it piece by piece. And you know, there's a lot of things to learn from that. So if you wanna be part of that community here, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get all the updates inside of your YouTube feed. Uh, that's about it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.